temperatures necessary for producing spin polarization. Consider the numerical implications of the polarization experiments previously examined in problems 4.4 and 4.5. Suppose that a magnetic field as high as 5 Tesla is available in the laboratory. It is desired to use this field to polarize a sample containing particles of spin 1 half so that the number of spins pointing in one direction is at least three times as large as the number pointing in the opposite direction. To how low an absolute temperature must the sample be cooled if the spins are electronic with a magnetic moment 10 to minus 23 joules per tesla. So how low an absolute temperature must the sample be cooled if the particles are protons having a nuclear magnetic moment 1.4 10 to minus 26 joules per tesla. Comment on the ease and feasibility of these two experiments. Okay, so uh, we have uh, two energy levels. Uh, the first energy level, the ground state energy, is E plus, that is minus mu zero B. And this happens when the magnetic moment is plus mu zero. And the probability of occupancy is a constant C times E to the beta mu zero b. On the other hand, the excited state energy E minus is equal to mu zero b. The magnetic moment is minus mu zero. It's opposing the magnetic field. And the probability of occupancy of this level is C times E to the minus beta mu zero b. Now, we want to have the number of spins pointing in one direction at least three times as large as the number pointing in the opposite direction. So that means we want to have probability of occupancy of the ground state three times the probability of occupancy of the excited state. So this must be equal to three. So this is C times E to the beta mu zero B divided by C times e to the minus beta mu zero b, the constants cancel, so we find that e to the two beta mu zero b should be equal to three. In other words, beta must be equal to natural logarithm of three divided by two mu zero b. And beta, remember, is equal to 1 over kT. Okay, so if I substitute the numbers here, I find that kT should be equal to 2 mu zero b divided by natural logarithm 3. And this is 2 uh, for part A of the problem. I find that uh, mu zero is 10 to minus 23 uh, Tesla, joules per Tesla. So it is two times 10 to minus 23 times five Tesla divided by natural logarithm of three. So this is uh, 10 to minus 22 divided by natural logarithm 3. Now I can find the temperature uh, by considering kT value at room temperature which is 0 0.025 electron volts. So um, let's look at the ratio of the two kT values. Well the kT that I need is uh, 10 to minus 22 divided by natural logarithm of 3 and the kT at room temperature is 0 0.025 times 1.6 10 to minus 19 joules. So if I take the ratio of these two, I will find that the T 
divided by the room temperature is equal to 10 to minus 22 divided by as natural logarithm 3 0 0.025 1.6 10 to minus 19 and room temperature we can take roughly as 295 Kelvin which gives us for the temperature value 6.7 Kelvin. So this was for part A. For part B of the problem, uh, I will have a new beta value and my new beta value will be because the rest of the problem is the same, it's just the mu zero that's changing. Natural logarithm of 3, 2, mu zero prime divided by B. And this will be equal to 1 over KT prime. So I will find that KT prime is equal to 2 mu zero prime B. 2 mu zero prime is 1.4 10 to minus 26. 1.4 10 to minus 26, 5 Tesla divided by natural logarithm 3. This is going to be in joules. And then I have KT value at room temperature 0 0.025 times 1.6 10 to minus 19 joules. And I take the ratio of these two. I find that T prime divided by the room temperature should be equal to 1.4 times 10 to minus 25 divided by natural logarithm 3 0 0.025 1.6 10 to minus 19 and this gives me for T prime because this is room temperature is about 295 Kelvin T prime value is 9.4 milli Kelvin so this is the answer to part B and for part C I want to know which temperature is easily attainable so if I look at the temperature uh, 6.7 Kelvin this is something that can be easily obtained in liquid helium. Easily obtained uh, using liquid helium. Liquid helium temperature is 4.2 Kelvin. So um, I can cool it down to 6.7 Kelvin and below easily using liquid helium. Uh, however, to attain a temperature like 9.4 millikelvin this is harder to obtain uh, compared to the readily available liquid helium temperature uh, this is harder to obtain and requires a sophisticated technique sophisticated methods such as adiabatic demagnetization Okay, so we talked about uh, temperatures necessary for producing uh, spin polarization. And we want to obtain the number of uh, spins pointing in one direction, three times the number of spins pointing in the other direction. And given that we have two non-degenerate energy levels, mu zero B and minus mu zero B, the ratio of the probabilities is e to the beta mu zero b divided by e to the minus beta mu zero b and that should be equal to 3. The one that has the higher probability is the ground state. So uh, this beta by definition is equal to 1 over thermal energy kT. So I know the value of thermal energy at room temperature. It's 1 over 40 electron volts which is 0 0.05 eV. 
and the kt value should be 2 mu 0 b divided by natural logarithm 3. In part a, the mu 0 value is for the electron 10 to minus 23 joules per tesla. For the proton, it is uh, 1.4 10 to minus 26 joules per tesla. So I have substitute these values and I find that when I put a room temperature uh, value as 295 Kelvin, the temperature I need to attain is 6.7 Kelvin in part A and 9.4 9 millikelvin in part B. 6.7 Kelvin is something we can easily obtain using liquid helium cooling, but 9.4 millikelvin requires a sophisticated technique such as adiabatic demagnetization.